I mix what I like, what I like, what I like, what I like, what I like. All right, what's up, world? Welcome to another edition of I Mix What I Like. Again, I'm Jared Ball, happy to be your host. And uh, we're, we're happy to be joined in this conversation uh, by Stephen F. Riley, who, among many other things, is a curator of a website, mixedracestudies.org, mixedracestudies.org. And he's fresh back from uh, the 2017 Critical Mixed Race Studies Conference, and we want to talk with him a little bit about that and his broader work. Stephen, welcome to the show. Uh, thank you for having me, Jarrett. Um, it's a pleasure. So if we could, let's just start broadly, again, speaking with uh, uh, the purpose of your, your website, and then let's talk a little bit about the conference you just came back from, uh, and in particular, this 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 part of it, the critical part of it, that I know is uh, uh, important to, to a lot of our work. But uh, please tell us a little bit about MixedRaceStudies.org. Um, my, my website, MixedRaceStudies.org, is a um, interdisciplinary website that covers the topics surrounding multiracialism. So it, um, I've, I've had the site up since 2009. Currently, I get about um, 100,000 visitors per month now at this point, and maybe a million and a half hits per month. And it, it's um, there right now there are over 11,000 11, posts, which comprises of um, 1,500 books, over 6,800 articles, and other other videos and other other posts in, of of, um, of relevant nature to to mix race. Now, so, is it particular to the uh, African descended or, or or African Black American and white inter intermixtures, or is it uh, focused more broadly speaking on on all the various forms? All, all the various so called mixtures of, of so called races. Mm -hmm. So okay. um, uh, I I also should uh, add a caveat that you know re remind your audience that race is a, is a social construction, but can, you know it's still very is very much real, and racism is very much real, particularly in the United States. So um, that's one of the things I I, I constantly sort of. Uh, contemplate all the time, you know, about the, the, the nature of race and racism. So, um, that's always in the back of my mind when I talk about race and the, the, um, question is that, you know, it does mixed race imply that they're pure races. And, that, and that's a question I always ask. So, mm -hmm. well, tell us a little bit about this, this conference that you just came back from and in particular, why the critical portion of it is included in the title or the focus of that work, the Critical Mixed Race Studies Conference. Sure, I'll, and I'll just uh, quickly just show you the, the conference brochure, the program guide. And let me just quickly, just for people who may not know, um, the definition of critical mixed race is, and I'll read a definition that's from uh, G. Reginald Daniel, who's one of the preeminent scholars. Um, Critical mixed race studies is the transracial, transdisciplinary, trans and transnational in scope. It places the concept of mixed race at the critical center and focus um, such that multiracial individuals become subjects of historical, social, cultural processes rather than simply objects of analysis. This involves the study of racial consciousness among mixed, racially mixed people, the world which they live in, the ideological forces that inform their identity and experience. CMRS also stresses the critical analysis of the institutionalization of social, cultural, and political structures based on the dominant conceptions of race. In keeping with the sociologists Michael Omni and Howard Winnett, racial formation theory, CMRS acknowledges the concept of race and invokes biologically based human characteristics, but the selection of specific human features for the purposes of racial signification uh, is constantly changing. It's a constantly changing socio-historical process. Accordingly, CMRS emphasizes the, the constructed nature of race and the notion that racial categories are um, are continuously being created, inhabited, contested, transformed, and destroyed. Finally, CMRS underscores the mutability of race and the porosity of racial boundaries in order to critique the local and global systemic injustices rooted in the processes of racialization and social stratification based on race, 
as well as the interlocking nature of racial phenomena with sex, gender, sexuality, class, and other categorizations of difference. So that was a mouthful, but I wanted to get that out there so people might understand that. So, so if you could whittle that down a little bit, okay. what, what does all of that mean uh, uh, in terms of, uh, uh, you know, an approach to, to an analysis of or interpretation of or understanding of the so-called mixed race experience uh, or experiences uh, in this country and around the world? Oh, oh, well, in, in this particular, in, in the context of this conference, um, I think that it's, um, it's it really a, 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 an, an, an analysis of race within the context of, of whiteness in America, I, I would say, um, and whether or not people of mixed race are, um, do they, do they help? destroy the concept of race? Do they help break, break down racial boundaries or not? Really is the ultimate question. And I think um, the answer to that question is probably no. So. Well, if we could, let's take a, a moment with that because that's that's certainly one of the, the key components of my own particular interest in, in this field. That is in, in popular culture, popular media, popular conversation, um, there is sometimes this tendency to view uh, so-called mixed race people in, you know, very simple, you know, traditional, tragic, of course, uh, uh, terms. And in particular, over the last several years, with the with the more rise to prominence of Barack Obama and even artists like Drake and Trevor Noah and folks like that, there is this assumption that seems to be uh, maybe reoccurring or occurring anew or taking a new height. That, that the entrance into these popular spaces of so-called mixed race people is some sort of automatic advance in terms of how we uh, understand race and, as you were putting it, whiteness and other isms like imperialism or colonialism or capitalism and so on and so forth. And I don't necessarily see it that way. You know, even shows like Blackish, I don't know that they necessarily, you know, raise, uh, um, I don't know, consciousness or, or levels of criticism or understanding. And they seem to just more play on traditional understandings and kind of simple, narrow understandings of what it is to be mixed, so-called mixed in the United States. But please respond to any of that or elaborate on any of that. Well, I mean, yeah, if you, you, you speak uh, a little bit eloquently about uh, Barack Obama, for example, and there is this hope by by some that he would somehow, because of his, his white mom and his black father, um, sort of transcend racial boundaries in America. And in many ways, he was perceived and, and of course, identified as, as a black man in the United States. So in, in many ways, that, that has not really changed a lot. And you're absolutely correct. Um, it, it, it has uh, changed the perception that there are many, many, many more people who are of mixed descent in this country. But at the same time, you know, there's also people, the work of, of other um, sociologists and historians that show that, you know, virtually every person of Af who identifies as African-American does, ha in fact, have some mixed interest, ancestry. So it, it, it just open up some possibilities. But it, so far, I, I don't see it really changing the racial dynamics in, in this country. I mean, has there been a shift in your view in... Um... In this country, in the United States, that is, in the, I guess, approach or, um, well, one, let me ask this, is there, uh, numerically speaking or percentage speaking, what can you say to us about the, the numbers of so-called mixed race people, uh, maybe even particularly black and white in this country? Are we seeing this, this, this grand shift and a grand mixing, so to speak, uh, in the United States that, that you know, it, it, it levels different from, from you know, years past? Well, I mean, the, the, I should point out that, um, you know, the, the Census Bureau um, allowed people to mark two or more races back in 2000. And um, so the numbers from 2000 to 2010 was sort of a 32% increase from 2.3 to 2.9%, um, which I believe is something like um, 9.8 million. I have to go back and look. But, um, 
you know, you have to look look through that and look look at those numbers and look at the fact that many of the people who were um, marked on the census were in fact children under 18. And as Sarah, Sandy Darity has pointed out, there really has not been a seismic shift in um, policies or, um, you know, hasn't been a se seismic shift in, in really um, our, our, our thinking about race in America because of that. And, if, and another thing I like to point out, too, is that it's not the first time that the census has enumerated people of mixed descent. Um, it has identified people as, quote unquote, mulatto, quadroons and octoroons on the census in the past. And, and that stopped in 1920. So it is not the first time. So. So but what about in terms of uh, uh, popular media or popular culture, conversation about various mixtures? What would how would you say or how would you, if at all, assess the shift uh, maybe over the last decade or so, uh, uh, in what's being produced and what's being said about these mixtures, so-called. Well, there's been a lot of um, a great deal of literature, you know, in the, in the academic realm, and a lot of popular, of course, and in, in popular culture. Um, you have people like Noah, uh, Trevor Noah. Um, obviously, the the most famous person is uh, you know Barack Obama, of course. And then you have the um, the movie about the Lovings and their actually their relationship, not so much about their children, but you know again I, I would have to throw inter interracial couples in that mix, and that would include myself. And um, so there, there's certainly um, a lot of that, and especially you know that was discussed at, at great length at the conference. So and and you know that sort of segues into what you were talking, you what you're asking about the critical at the Critical Race Race Studies Conference. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I can go into that too, if you'd like me to go into well, yeah, that. Say, I mean, please say a word or two about that if you would. Let's... Well, I've been, this is the fourth conference I've been to. The, the first three uh, were at DePaul University and um, one was in 2010, 2012, and 2014. And um, this one was at uh, University of Southern California in Los Angeles. And I should just add, a, you know, uh, just a quick note, footnote is that the, the 2018 conference is going to be at the University of Maryland uh, in March 1st through 3rd in 2018. So um, I've been to all the con conferences and this is really the first time um, that there's been a real, at least throughout, there's a, a common thread throughout virtually every, every session that I've been to that really takes a close examination of of what multiracialism means or what mixed race means in the context of whiteness in America. So there was a real critique in particular um, of, of loving versus Virginia, you know, on, on interracial marriages, would that lead us to a new utopia? And, and, and the answer seems to be, to be no. And of course, um, what really weighed on this conference uh, more than anything was the election of Donald Trump. And um, that really, was uh, um, you could really sort of sense that in, in just about every session um, that that talked about contemporary issues. See, but that actually speaks to, if I understood you correctly, one of my major concerns with with the whole approach or conversation in this country around interracial relationships or or, or so called mixed race people. That is that that the idea that um, uh, we were headed in a direction prior to Trump that was some sort of, of real advance that that he is some that he is a backlash against or that he is some sort of uh, uh, antithesis to you know troubles me a little bit in the sense that um, you know the idea that that if there's an increase in interracial relationships or that there's a focus on mixed race people that this is somehow going to uh, uh, you know um, fix or correct the hostilities you know, that exists between the various communities as they've been been sort of isolated, camped or racialized. So in other words, you know, the fact that that that, uh, um, you know, that my parents came together briefly uh, and produced me speaks to nothing about the hostilities that exist between white and black or black and Jew, et cetera, and so forth. And that the focus on those relationships seems in my limited view 
to to I guess gloss over or or even in fact try to hide the, those those continuing uh, hostilities. Uh, uh, and then finally, the fact that black people in this country have have continued to see their material conditions devolve kind of again raises, you know, over over, you know, the last 30, 40 years raises this again, this concern for me that how could people be so confused as to the rise of the, the election of a Trump, uh, uh, given that so many of these other issues have never been properly dealt with? And I guess that's basically my point. And, and feel free to do whatever you like with that long <laughs> the whole, you know that that you know um, that was actually one of my um, you know I, I I spoke at the conference I I, I delivered a paper um, at the last conference on the identity of Obama and you know there was some consternation within you know it was a small group of people about why he chose to identify as black in in, in the United States instead of instead of mixed and also. The, you know, we're, you know, sort of valorizing the, the Lovings. In fact, we're still in this, you know, we're 50 years after the Lovings, we elect Donald Trump. Um, and, and so there was a great deal of um, examination of that, you know, the fact that we've really part of part of the idea of, of mixedness in this country has to do for some people from some scholars is the centering of whiteness, you know, and we still sort of valorize the idea, whiteness as the idea. So in in many ways, people who are so-called dual minority mixes, for example, black and Asian, um, sort of get, um, they're not part of the mix in in many ways and sort of get dropped off and are are not really examined and sort of marginalized. So um, this is really the, 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 this was really the emphasis pretty much of the of of the conference in, in many of the sessions that I attended, so um, you know, but that I, you know, but that's why, I like you know, uh, uh, again, one of the, the 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 concerns that I've always had with this with the field is is, and I know many others have pointed this out that that there needs to be a a, a difference of approach or understanding between different forms of these so called mixtures. I mean, an Asian and a white mixture is really you know, uh, uh, contextually has nothing to do with or is very dissimilar to a black white one in this country. So, I mean, it's like it's almost unfair to put them all in the same mixed race studies category, uh, given those. And I and I, you know, and it kind of reminded me, you know, and I didn't we didn't plan on this, but but I, I think silly, you know, stupidly even I didn't plan on this, but I just saw last night Get Out and I don't know if you've seen it. But I mean, I think that 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 film, in many ways, one being produced by somebody so who's a so-called black-white uh, a mixture, uh, who looks very critically not only at black-white relationships but black and liberal white, liberal affluent white relationships. I think you know says a lot that speaks even to the point I'm trying to make very quickly, and you know about the differences between black, white, Asian, and and white, so on and so forth. You know. Oh, yeah. You know, <laughs> well, you I, get you know, out. <laughs> yeah, it's not, that's not my genre, but uh, of films. But I, you know, I'm really tempted to go see that film because because of that. And um, we were just talking. You know, when I was out there, I was out there with uh, um, a, a um, artist, a performance artist, and teacher and scholar named Fanchon Cox De Giovanni, and I actually stayed with her. And she's somebody who started something. That's sort of how my segue, how I got into it, uh, mixed race studies. I followed her chat. Uh, she co-hosted a chat called Mixed Chicks Chat, which discussed those issues every week. And I think at one point she was very enthusiastic about mixed race and what it could do for us as a society. And now, maybe eight years on or so. Um, she, she wonders, she really has some, has some doubts about that. And, um, you know, and she's, uh, another product of, um, of interracial marriage. And, um, th- you know, she, she asks what has changed and, and, and not a lot. And of course, when you're going back to your, your issues of mixtures, there, there are some people who suggest that people of, of white Asian descent may simply fold into whiteness the way that people of Italian and um, Italian Americans and Irish did 150 years ago. So that might be simply another form of whiteness. 
And also we're, we're looking at people who talk about demographics, you know, suggesting that, you know, oh, in 2050, we'll all be mixed. Well, that really depends on what whiteness becomes. And whiteness is, has a great ability to adapt. And um, you certainly, we all know that. Well, and then, you know, I, you know, it also shouldn't require uh, a so-called mixture of everyone to, to, to ease the suffering of those involved in all of this. But, you know, I, I'll leave it here, but, but uh, since you, especially since you haven't seen it, but I, I, as I said, I think it's perfectly appropriate that n- not only was Get Out a film made by a so-called mixed brother, but, by, yeah. but was also uh, uh, characterizing the relationship of black and liberal whites as a horror film, <laughs> as a yeah. horror story. I, I, you well, know, I think there's some, there's some value in that approach, uh, uh, even if it's not your genre. But but Stephen F. Riley, I thank you very much for joining me for this for this conversation. We we certainly appreciate your work and encourage others to visit it and uh, uh, follow it at mixedracestudies.org. Thanks again. Okay, thank you very much for having me on. Okay. Right. I mix what I like, what I like, what I like, what I like, what I like.